Hello everyone, welcome back. In this example, we're asked to sketch the graph of the two variable function f of x comma y is equal to 6 minus 3x minus 2y. And so one thing we might do for an example like this that will be helpful here is remember this notation f of x comma y is really a placeholder for our output value, which we might think of as z. So we can, if we want, rewrite this equation as z is equal to 6 minus 3x minus 2y. And with that, we can recognize, well, we're actually kind of familiar with this type of function. This is representing a plane in three-dimensional space, right? And we might even move some things around, put all of our variables on the same side, and rewrite this as 3x plus 2y plus z is equal to 6, just to make it a little bit more recognizable as a plane. But whenever we have these linear equations involving x, y, and z, we have to remember that these are representing our planes. And so our process for graphing a plane is going to be a little bit different than our process for graphing a more general two-variable function. And it's actually going to be a bit easier. And the, one of the reasons it's a lot easier is because, well, it only takes three points to uniquely determine a plane, as long as those three points do not lie on the same line. So if we want to sketch the graph of this plane, we just have to find and plot three points that our plane goes through. And we just have to make sure that those three points do not lie in a single line. And so the best way to go about doing this is to find the x, y, and z intercept planes. Uh, we won't always be able to do this if our plane is actually parallel to one of our coordinate planes, like the x, y plane, the x, z plane, or the y, z plane. Um, but in this case, that is not going to be happening because all three variables are showing up. So remember, we're going to label our axes according to that right-hand rule setup. So we have x, y, and z. And so to graph our plane and find these three points, we're just going to find where does our plane intersect our x, y, and z axis. So let's maybe go ahead and start with the z intercept. So if our plane is going to intercept the z axis, it has to be on the z axis, which means x and y have to both be equal to zero. And so if we set x and y both equal to zero, we can see in our equation that z must be equal to six. And so that means we have the point 0, 0, 006 on the graph of our function or on the graph of our plane. So I've gone ahead and plotted that on our three-dimensional axis. So now we need to find our other intercepts. Let's maybe look at our x-intercept next. If we want to be on the x-axis, we have to have z and y both being equal to 0. So now y and z are going to be set equal to 0. And that takes the equation for our plane or function and reduces it down to, let's see, well, if y and z are 0, then our equation becomes 3x is equal to 6, which tells us x is equal to 2. And another point on the graph of our three-dimensional surface or our plane is going to be the point 2, 0, 0. So we take two steps along the x-axis and plot our point 2, 0, 0. And to get our third point to determine our plane, we're going to find our y-intercept. And so our y-intercept will occur when x and z are both equal to 0. So if we set x and z equal to 0 in our equation, it becomes 2y is equal to 6, which tells us y is equal to 3. And so we have the point 0, 3, 0 on the graph of our plane as well. So remember, our plane really is this infinitely long, flat surface. However, what we're looking at here is really just kind of like the intersection of our plane in that first octant of our three-dimensional space when x, y, and z are all positive. If we look at just that piece of our plane and how it intersects this space here, it's going to look like this little triangular piece of this infinitely large, flat plane. But here we've done it. We've sketched the graph of our function of two variables. And in general, this is a good process to use to sketch a plane. Hello everyone, welcome back. In this example, we are asked to describe the graph of the two variable function given by the equation f of x comma y is equal to x squared minus y. And so I don't think it's gonna be too helpful in this problem, but sometimes it is helpful to rewrite this as z is equal to x squared minus y and hope that we can recognize this equation as something like a quadric surface or a plane or a cylinder. And well, I don't think we immediately recognize what this function is from our list of common functions or functions we've encountered before. 
So we're going to have to deal with this as if it is a totally new function. And so when we're working with more complicated multivariable functions or functions of two variables, it's often very helpful to look at traces of the function to help figure out its graph and some of its behavior. So let's go ahead and look at some traces for this function and use those traces to try to visualize what the graph of this function would look like in three-dimensional space and then describe that graph. So remember, when we are creating these traces or what we will call level curves for a function, we are setting a value for one of the variables in the function equal to a constant and then graphing the two-dimensional curve that is a result of that substitution. And so geometrically what happens in this process is we take a plane that is parallel to one of our coordinate planes, see what it looks like when that plane intersects our surface here, and then we graph that curve of intersection. So a good trace to often start off with is a horizontal trace like z is equal to zero. So remember, if we graph the plane z equals zero, that gives us the xy plane. And so by looking at the z equals zero trace or z equals zero level curve, we're figuring out where does our three-dimensional surface uh, intersect the xy plane and what does that curve of intersection look like? Well, if we set z equal to zero in our equation, we get zero is equal to x squared minus y, which we can rearrange and write as y is equal to x squared. So this trace or level curve, we can uh, write in the xy plane, and it's just gonna be the graph of y equals x squared. And we should recognize that graph as a concave up parabola with a vertex at the origin. And so this concave up parabola with a vertex at the origin is our trace or level curve corresponding to z is equal to zero. And it's often helpful to label these traces to let us know which z or variable value they came from. So one trace is usually not enough to visualize the graph of the function, so let's look at a few more. So let's look at the trace corresponding to z equals negative one, as well as the trace corresponding to z equals positive one. So if we set z equal to negative one in our equation, we're thinking about that plane just below the xy plane when z is equal to negative one, when does that plane intersect our three-dimensional surface, and what does that curve of intersection look like? Well, if we set z equal to negative one, our equation initially looks like negative one is equal to x squared minus y, which we can rearrange and rewrite as y is equal to x squared plus one. And so now if we graph y equals x squared plus one, that's gonna look a lot like the curve or trace we just graphed, but shifted up one unit. And so that trace is gonna correspond to when z is equal to negative one. So if we're looking down our z axis onto the xy plane, at the level where z is equal to zero, we have a parabola. And then if we go one more layer down uh, along the z axis or take one step down vertically, then we're still gonna be on a level curve that looks like a parabola. However, it'll be shifted up one unit. So let's see what happens when we take a step up from the xy plane or look at that plane where z is equal to positive one. Well, then our equation is gonna become one is equal to x squared minus y, or after rearranging and solving for y, we can write that as y is equal to x squared minus one. And so that's still gonna be a parabola, but now it's gonna be a parabola that has been shifted down one unit. And we're not worried about sketching these super accurately, accurately here, but that third level curve corresponding to a concave up parabola with a vertex at uh, zero negative one, is going to be the trace or level curve corresponding to z equals positive one. And so now we're starting to get a little bit of a glimpse of the shape and behavior of this three-dimensional surface as we move down these uh, level curves or traces at different z values. So maybe that's enough to kind of get the glimpse of what the graph might look like, but it's often helpful to look at more level curves from different perspectives and angles. If we do something like set y equal to a value, then we'll look at traces that are parallel to the xz plane instead. So that's what I wanna do next, create a few more traces, this time um, traces that are going to be parallel to the xz plane. And let's go ahead and just use those same values that we used for z, so y equals negative one, y equals zero, and y equals positive one. Well, if we set y equal to negative one, then our equation becomes z is equal to x squared minus negative one or x squared plus one. Similarly, when we set y equal to zero, our equation becomes z is equal to x squared. And then when we set y equal to one, z is equal to 
x squared minus 1. Now we can't graph these traces on the same set of axes that we used for our first set of traces, and that's because these traces do not live in like the xy plane or some plane parallel to the xy plane. Instead, these traces are living in the xz plane. All right, so what does our trace look like when y is equal to negative 1? Well, it's going to give us z is equal to x squared plus 1, which is still going to be a parabola that has shifted one unit, but now just in the xz plane instead. So z equals x squared plus 1 is going to roughly look something like that, and that corresponds to when y is equal to negative 1. All right, our next trace is going to correspond to when y is equal to 0, and that gives us z is equal to x squared and that is just our parabola with a vertex at the origin that is concave up. And our last level curve or trace corresponding to y equals positive 1 will look like z equals x squared minus 1, which is just our parabola shifted down one unit. And so now we can go through a similar process of interpreting these traces as giving us information about the shape of our surface as we take these steps through these parallel planes to the xz plane or for these different y value planes. And now to finish this off and get as much uh, perspective and information as possible, we should also look at traces that are going to be in the yz plane, and that would be found by setting x equal to some constant values. But we can see here is if we set x equal to some constant values, then we're just going to be getting linear equations in terms of z and y. And so the graph of all the traces in the yz plane are going to be just lines. And what we end up seeing when we put all this information together is that we're really just traveling along our surface by traveling along all these uh, shifted parabolas that are attached to these lines that we see in the yz plane. And so let's go ahead and look at the graph of this function now on GeoGebra, and we can kind of see where all these level surfaces or traces are coming into play. All right, we can actually set z equal to 0, y equal to 0, or x equals to 0, and see where these planes are intersecting our three-dimensional surface. And if we kind of stack all these traces together, we're really creating this like wire skeleton for our three-dimensional surface. And if we put enough of these together or just look at our three-dimensional surface, what we really see is like a parabolic slide. Technically, we can think of this as a parabolic cylinder. And so technically, we actually can think of this surface as a uh, cylinder. It's just a little different than the cylinders we've seen before because all the lines of symmetry for our previous cylinders have been parallel to a coordinate plane. But now we can see that this really is a cylinder made up of a bunch of shifted parabolas, but these parabolas are shifted along the line z equals negative y.